I said you got to do it because you've been called to do it thank you Lord God it's called work it's called working for the Lord nobody likes to work we like to rest hello somebody we like to rest we don't like to work we like to do what we want to do when we want to do it hallelujah but you have the job of being God's ambassador here on earth you are a representative of God's glory hello thank you Lord God it, 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 listen it is not glamorous it is not glamorous do you think that it is fun to, 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 to have to uh, uh, hold up so many in prayer to have to prepare word every other week or every week or, 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 or study and do these things that the Lord has called us to do it ain't always fun hello somebody but it's necessary somebody says it's necessary that's why we gotta hold one another up in prayer hello thank you Lord God we gotta hold up one another you are necessary the ministry that you have and y'all saying I ain't got no ministry yes you do even if it starts right in your own home on Friday I think it was Friday prayer the Lord had directed me to tell people to go into their homes and start reading Psalms 91 out loud and praying over your home because the enemy has infiltrated some of our homes and when you go home it's supposed to be a place of peace and a place of rest hallelujah come on some of us don't even want to go home that's a oh, that's a trick of the enemy thank you Lord God and and, and the Lord had, had spoken into my ear and dropped it in my heart amen that we were going through a form of demonic terrorism hallelujah thank you Lord God he's terrorizing God's people but the devil is a liar you can overcome that and you don't have to wait you can just decree and declare that your God is greater come on that your God is stronger and he's mightier than that thing that you're going through oh our minds are being attacked every day every day our minds are being attacked but let me tell you something for this work that we do there is great reward hello somebody there is great reward in the work that we do and the work that we do is our reasonable service it's not a sacrifice you know, I, 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 I was uh, even on this morning, early this morning, Lord, uh, I, I woke up, I don't know, 4.30 or so, and I started just thinking about the Lord. And I, I said, Lord, when did everything that involves you become a sacrifice? I mean, we just feel like we're doing God such a big favor. <laughs> right? I mean, everything is just, well, if you want me to come out on Tuesday, you know, I'm just getting off work. That's such a sacrifice. But it ain't sacrifice for you to go to work. But we feel like we get no reward for coming to the house of God. That's what it is. But you got to remember that your life, your health, and your strength, come on, is your reward. Without that, you would not be able to go to work. You would not have gainful employment. We complain about giving tithes and offering, but you wouldn't even have a job. Come on, somebody. Oh, some of it. Lord, you give me a good job, I'll happily pay that tenth. Until we get that good job. They said, well, that's too much. They don't need more than five dollars. Hallelujah. This is how we think sometimes. But this is a trick of the enemy. Everything that involves God involves increase somewhere in your life. Come on, do you believe that? I need you to believe that today. I, I, I want you to prove God in your life. 
how can you be a good representative of God if you can't prove him in your life we are so we become so content with looking at others lives and others breakthroughs and others victories to prove that God is real and that's good for a time that will keep you for a time. That will keep you for a moment. But after a while, you're going to tell somebody you're going to need some positive proof. Come on, within yourself that God is real. It's just like living off a of mother's grace and her prayers. After a while, you're going to have to get your own prayer life. After a while, you can't live off of the songs, come on, that somebody else is singing. You're going to have to get a song in your heart. That will cause you and lead you to your breakthrough. My God. Let's get to the word of God. I don't know how we're going to tie it together, but the Lord's going to do it. Hello? Come on, Holy Ghost. We need you today. God, we ask you to prepare our hearts and prepare our ears. And prepare our minds, God. Put us in a place of receiving. God, the praises has gone up. And we ask for the blessings to come down. God, we need you in this house. We need breakthrough. We need mind change. God, we need proof that you are working on our behalf. Lord, help us to get into the place where we need to be to receive this word on today, that it will fall on good ground in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Lord God. Going over to Acts chapter 10. Thank you, Lord God. Going over to Acts chapter 10. Let me just explain a little bit what happened here because I'm not going to read this whole thing. So I'll just, uh, uh, just kind of expound here. We're talking about the apostle Peter. All right. We're talking about Peter here and we're talking about this Gentile uh, uh, a man who his name is Cornelius. And uh, he was high up. Uh, the Bible calls him a, he was a centurion of uh, uh, the band that was called an Italian band. So he was part of the Roman army. All right. And here uh, uh, we know that after Jesus had uh, 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 gave his life and got back up in victory that the gospel became available to all somebody say to all the gospel became available to all but here uh, 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 they were in a transitional phase the Jewish people were in a transitional phase because uh, uh, they, they had a hard time believing that what was exclusive what seemed to be exclusive to them and I say seemed to be because uh, uh, God was available to all of us and we can prove that even in the Old Testament hello somebody that God always had a plan for all people but here what seemed to be exclusive they had a hard time letting go and letting it be available to other peoples but here, uh, 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 Peter, who was a, a man, uh, 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 was an apostle of God who, who had sway in the church, in the early church, uh, 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 God wanted to use him to open up the door of salvation to peoples that were other than of the Jewish nation. Amen? All right, so you can take your time and meet and read through Acts chapter 10. But what I want to get to is down in verse, and it was a miracle how he got there because the Lord spoke to Cornelius and Cornelius prayed, amen, and he, he, he asked that God would send someone their way, amen, that would be able to explain salvation, be able to explain the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it tells us that uh, 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 Peter was, was uh, in a place that was a place of it was unfamiliar. It was a place that was unfamiliar. It was a place that was really forbidden for him to be. And he was staying at the, the house of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, Simon, of Tanner. Uh, he was a tanner. And he would, when you were uh, a tanner, 
uh, uh, you would be responsible for handling animals and meats and different things like that. So that was considered to be unclean, all right? So here the Lord spoke to Peter and he proved himself by sending people from Cornelius' house to beg, not to beg, but to ask Peter to come and explain this gospel. But as I said, Peter was of the Jewish faith. He was of the Jewish nation. So he still had difficulty believing that this word, this gospel was available to everybody. Somebody shout, it's available to all. It's available to all because I tell you, even we today, when we come into the knowledge of God, huh? we want to judge people. We want to judge people and see if they're, you know, if they're qualified for your Jesus. Hello, somebody. This is how we are. I know it don't sound like it, but it's the way it is sometimes. But here, uh, uh, we're going to pick it up in verse 33 verse 33 it says here immediately therefore I sent to thee and thou hast well done that thou art come now therefore we are all here present before God this is Cornelius speaking to hear all things that are commanded of commanded thee of God so here they were asking to hear the word of God so here, I love this verse because many people will use this verse and have no idea where it comes from. The Bible says here in verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now y'all know we always go around, people say, oh, God is no respecter of persons. And we wanna uh, take that scripture and we want to talk about that in the way of, uh, I guess, if we require something of the Lord, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Tell somebody that is right. That's right. That is correct. That's a great way to use the scripture. But here, if we put this scripture in context, here Peter is saying that God has no respecter of person for those that receive the gospel, for those that receive the truth of the gospel. And when you receive the truth of the gospel, it enables you, come on, to receive the blessings that come along with the revelation of the gospel. To know that God is real. To know that God is a healer. All of those promises that God has made to us, it now enables you to have access to the throne of grace. Do you believe it this morning? So it says here in verse 35, it says, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him love this scripture somebody say work your righteousness now, I know that sometimes that might sound crazy because you're saying well it's not me it's God it's, 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 it's you know it, it's not you know it's not by works lest any man should boast but you got to understand when we say work your righteousness we're saying work your authority that comes with receiving the gospel in your life you have to know for yourself that when God changes your life forever, when he changes and turns your life around, when you accept him as Lord and, Je and, and, Lord and Savior of your life, you are now enabled, you are now act activated to be able to go to the throne of grace. Tell somebody, I got a right. Come on, say it. I got a right. And the Bible says if you come any other way, you're nothing but a thief and a robber. Oh, I crack up sometimes when people, you know, they living like hell. Come on, somebody. But they think that they're entitled to the same thing that you're entitled to. Come on now. That's not so. That's not so. 
which is the reason why when we go, and I know I have this issue many times, I will go to the hospital, People will call me, Pastor, I need you to pray for my mother. I need you to pray for my brother. I need you to pray this sickness is happening. This difficulty is happening. And I want to, I want to attack that subject in my heart because my heart goes out to that person. The empathy that we have, it goes out to that person. But I got to do what Jesus did. What Jesus did, he not only took care of the physical issue, but first he got at the heart issue. Tell somebody there's a heart issue that must be dealt with before we can deal with your physical situations and your physical uh, 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 well-being. And that is that you must accept him as Savior and Lord of your life. We are getting away from the gospel, trying to tickle people's ear and tickle people's fancy and tell them, oh baby, it's okay, God understands. No, you've got to live right. You've got to walk right. You gotta talk right. There's requirements, come on somebody, that God is expecting of you. You might, they come as you are, Yes, you can come as you are, but you can't stay as you are. Tell somebody there's a change coming. There has to be a change and nobody wants to talk about the change anymore. We all want to identify with the world. The Bible says come out from amongst them. You can't be like them. Be ye separate. We just got finished singing a song, Holy. God is holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah. And I know that when we talk like this, they say, well, pastor, you're talking about things that are so hard and so difficult. I can't do it. You're right. Tell somebody you're right. You can't do it. But God can. Hello, somebody. No, you can't do it. But God can. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct. Tell somebody, let Jesus lead you. Oh my God, that's why we get in trouble because we think we know better than God. We think we know what's going to get us out. If you knew what was going to get you out, you would have never got in. We're just not that brilliant. Hello, somebody? We're just not that brilliant. You've got to trust God. For a lot of us, you got to trust God in an unusual way. Hallelujah. But you got to learn how to work your righteousness. Going over to Psalms 34. And when you work your righteousness, this scripture becomes alive to you because you realize that you are entitled now because I, I tell you y'all we got some frustrated praise up in this house my god I feel it it's frustrated praise somebody say frustrated praise I mean your praise want to break out so bad you want to praise God so much you just want to let go and let God and you just like oh I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet. You waiting for the music to tickle your fancy. Amen. You waiting for somebody to sing a song. Oh, that's my song. No. That's not where praise comes from. Praise comes from your experience. Praise comes from what you're going through during the week. Come on now. And praise don't start when you walk through that door. It doesn't start when you walk through the door. Y'all get all dressed up fancy and put on your nice perfume and your jewelry. And you're getting ready to go to church for praise. Boy, when I get to church, when I get to church, what does the Bible say? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That means before you get there, you got to have a praise. Tell somebody you got to have a praise before you get there. 
enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is good. Not because the music is good. Because the Lord is good. Not because the song service was so good. Not because the word was so good. Because the Lord is good. Somebody say the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth through all generations. That means me and mine. That's why I praise him. That's why I give him glory. That's why I love him. Because he first loved me. David said it best. He said, I will bless the Lord. Psalm 34 at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Where is your continuous praise? I'm asking a question today. Where is your continuous praise? Why is our praise so tied to our everyday experiences? Your praise has to be above and beyond your daily experiences because it is guaranteed that you will go through something absolutely every day as long as you live. Can I get a witness here today? Life does not give us breaks. So your praise cannot be attached to that. Your praise has to be attached to the Lord is good. Huh? The Lord is good. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. People say, well, I don't need to come to church every week. But let me tell you something. That's when you will find strength. I hope you do. That's where you find strength. That's where you find comfort in one another. This is why, y'all, we think that we're coming to church just to be ministered to. But there's ministry in the church for you. The people that you're sitting next to need to be encouraged. The people that you're sitting next to need to hear somebody say, I love you. I'm praying for you because they're thinking that when they leave this house, nobody thinks about them, nobody prays for them, nobody considers them in their daily thoughts, and they're feeling lonely all the week long. And they come once a week to try to get filled up, come on, to take them through sometimes the rest of the month. Tell somebody, that just don't work. It just don't work. A lot of times, now let me say this, a lot of times getting those little fill-ups, they will work when you don't do nothing. Hello, somebody? If you, if you, filled, if you filled your car up to a half a tank and you don't drive it, you good. Help me, somebody. If you fill up your car and you park it and you don't use it, you good. But even if you leave it there too long, the gas will get stale. Come on, it, your car will putt putt. And that's the problem, a lot of us just putt putt back to church, come on now. Hallelujah, because you done got stale in working and doing for God. Am I helping anybody today? That's why the Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together. I know we want to talk about this poor man, but I ain't talking about the poor man today. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That means that you're grabbing hold of the gospel. Down in verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Why is there a blessing for trusting God? Because it's a difficult thing to do. I'm trying to help you out today. Because a lot of us, we think, oh my goodness, I, I want to trust God. I, 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 I want to believe God that, 
that this thing that they told me I have, that God's going to bring me through. But I, I, I need some help. I, I can't do it by myself. And let me tell you, you shouldn't have to do it by yourself. You should have the people of the house praying with you. Hello, somebody? But my question is, who are the people of the house? Somebody raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. It's you. Stop trying to put all your junk on me. It's you. You've got to pray. You've got to believe. You've got to give a word of encouragement to your brother and sister. You're sitting closer to them than I am. Hello, somebody? Whose phone number do you have? Who? Whose phone number do you have? Do you have somebody's phone number that's on your row? That's behind you, that's in front of you. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to be one another's keepers. How can I pray for you and I don't even know your name? Hallelujah. You've been going here for a year and we don't even know your name. We got to run out the door to catch you to say hello. That's not God. I told you that relationships are developed not during service, before service and after service. Hello, somebody? I'm asking you to develop relationship today. Be a representative of Christ Jesus so that they can taste God through your living. Can I say that again? People need to taste God and see God through you. If God came down, if he sent the angel down today, this place would be empty because we all be scared and running. Hello, somebody. Let's be truthful. I would love to see an angel. That's what you think. Not from the description that the Bible gives. That can be a frightening thing. Hello, somebody. Therefore, God will use us who are familiar to one another to be able to express himself and to be able to show his goodness through you. Somebody say, through me. Now, I need you to repeat this with me. I have a responsibility to show God's goodness in my life. Come on, can we say it again? I have a responsibility to show the goodness of God in my life, in your life. Stop looking for the people on television. Stop looking for the people on the internet. Don't y'all know AI is out there? Artificial and artificial. You know what artificial mean? It ain't real. Artificial intelligence. Jesus is real. God is real. You are real. And he wants to work on a real level. Somebody say a real level. He wants to work on a real level in your life. Hallelujah. We're going we're, we're, we're gonna to finish this up. I want to say this statement. Lord gave me this statement. It may sound funny to you. But this is how the blessings of God should work in your life. Don't laugh at me. But when I was a child, it seemed like every time I was going on a school trip, my mother would make me a lunch that everybody knew whether I opened the bag of my lunch box or not, everybody knew what I had for lunch. And that's how the blessings of God should be. My mother would always make me, for some reason, she would wait for that day to make me an egg salad sandwich. Anybody ever been there? An egg salad sandwich. It didn't matter, come on somebody, whether I wanted you to know what I had for lunch or not, because of the aroma of the egg salad, 
people were going to know what was on the inside of my lunchbox. And this is how the blessings of God are supposed to operate. Whether you want to tell it or not, it should be evident in your life. Your, your, your blessings, your, your, your miracles, your healing should be just like that egg salad sandwich. It's so loud and it's so, it's so pure, amen, that you wear it and ain't nothing that anybody can do about it. People are going to say, oh my God, there's something about you. There's something about your aura. Come on now. And we ain't talking about auras where they want to go changing your aura. I've got the aura of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. But it's like that, you know, it, 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 you know it, it's happened to me. I told y'all I go on vacation many times and I just want to chill. You think ain't nobody looking at you? They don't know who I am, but they know who God is. Do people know who God is in you? Hallelujah. They just see it's something different. Tell somebody that's egg salad. <laughs> That's egg salad. Nothing you can do about it. They go no. And everybody ought to know. We used to sing that song, Who Jesus Is. So I say, He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright morning star. That's what He talks about. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works. And glorify the Father which is in heaven. Come on, stand to your feet. Do you receive the word on today? Hallelujah, that I know who I am. Come on, somebody say, I know who I am. And I have a right. I have a right to the blessings of God. Hallelujah, come on, you have a right to the blessings of God. And I want to pray today that you receive that into your minds and into your hearts. So that the, when the enemy comes to try to discourage you, or when people come try to discourage you, situations come to try to discourage you, that you will know that you have God to go to and that he will take care of his children. Father God, we come to you today. First of all, we want to start off by saying thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've brought us here. Thank you for this friends and family day that we have here on today. Thank you for all of these who are under the sound of our voices. God, we ask you today, oh God, that this word become real in their lives. Let them know, oh God, that you have already made preparation for them to be able to overcome the obstacles of life. So many are struggling unnecessarily. Hallelujah. Unnecessarily because we have not cast our cares on you knowing that you care for us. God, we need you today. We need you to help us to make up our mind that we believe you. We believe. Oh, I believe. I believe, God, that you are my strength. I believe that you are my healer. I believe that you are my way maker. I believe you are my savior. I believe that you are my keeper. God, when we struggle with these thoughts, God, we ask you, oh God, that you hold us up, pick us up, and let us know that you are there and that you will never leave us, neither will you ever forsake us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can we sing this song together? But not just sing it as a song, but sing it as a declaration today. I want you to declare the words that this word, that this song says that you are my strength. Your strength like no other. Your strength like no other. And it reaches to me. Come on. You are Come on, in the fullness, come on. 
in the fullness of your grace. Come on. In the power of your name. Come on, I told you he's going to lift you. Come on, sing it again. In the fullness. Yeah, in the power of your name. You are the lifter of my head. You are my hope. Come on. Come on, I want to hear you today. Come on, lift your voice. You're my hope like none other. And it reaches. Come on, sing it one more time. You are my hope. Hope like none other. And it reaches one time in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, he's lifting you right now. You lift me up in the fullness in the fullness of your grace hallelujah oh hallelujah you lift me up you lift me up you are my strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me come on can you give him some praise today come on y'all that was so frustrated that was so frustrated. Can you just find it? Somebody dig down deep and give God the fruit of your lips today. He deserves it. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, bless your name, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah. There's someone here who does not know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. We ask you to come so that we can lead you to the throne of grace. The gospel has been presented today. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And at one time we all belonged to that group of whosoever. But now we belong to the church. Hallelujah. And I'm glad about it. Because the Bible says he's not coming back for whosoever. But he's coming back for a church. Hello somebody. He's not coming back for whosoever. The whosoever, your time is right now. But if you want to spend eternity with God, you got to become part of the body of Christ. And that's what we offer here today. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's for everyone. Hello? So if you hear the word of God and the Holy Ghost has touched your heart, the Bible says, harden not your heart. Come now. And we'll lead you to the throne of grace. Is there one here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray a mass prayer. Father, we thank you for all that are here today. We thank you for the body of believers. 
Father, as we continue to go even throughout the rest of this day and the rest of this week and the rest of this month, the rest of this year, the rest of our lives, God, help us to know that we have access to the throne of grace. Help us to know that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and we can ask anything in your son's name and he will do it. All we got to do is ask in Jesus' name and you will do it. Help us to know God. Hallelujah, that we can work the righteousness that you have given us. And it's not our righteousness, but it's your righteousness that's in us. And we thank you for it today. And we give you praise and glory. Bless each and every household that's represented here today. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to continue to praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody, come on, somebody. Tell them thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, give my hand praise today. God bless you.